Look how smoothly this plays through. Not Now, there's, there's our hiccup there. Hey everyone, so today I'm gonna be discussing whether or not you can edit a feature film on this little MacBook Pro 14 inch. Reason I'm making this video, well actually two reasons. One is because I previously worked with this giant 16 inch MacBook Pro that I bought just in 2020. My younger self, I guess my 2020 self thought, the bigger the computer you get, the more it can handle. I started getting more advanced in my editing, dealing with more 4K and then 6K footage. That 16 inch MacBook Pro was not up to speed. It was getting to the point where I was either scared to take on projects or I would rush through projects because the editing process was so painful because of the playback speed or just the inability to play back anything on the timeline, even when I was using proxies, even when I was playing back in lower resolution media. Then the second reason I'm making this video about this new MacBook and why I invested in it is because I got to the point where I was about to shoot a feature length comedy and we shot on black magic so we we're editing primarily in 6k b-raw with tons of transitions and effects overlays layered 6k clips 4k drone footage all that stuff so forget a feature film my old computer couldn't even handle small short films so i knew it would be hell trying to edit this on it but i was skeptical like many of you might be out there of getting this new macbook pro because everyone is always trying to sell you the new best thing. And that's how I felt about my old 16 inch MacBook Pro when it came out, when I wanted to invest in a computer back in 2020. Obviously I'm making this video after my edit's done, so I got the edit done, but that doesn't mean that everything ran smoothly. So I'm gonna share those results with you. We're gonna jump into the timeline together. I'm gonna show you different editing scenarios where things ran super smoothly and other places where this computer may have trouble and you may want to consider before investing in it. Before we jump into that, this video would not be complete if I did not explain the configuration of the Mac that I bought and what I edited off of. Because it matters what you are editing off of. It doesn't matter if you have the most powerful computer in the world. If you're editing off this archival WD Elements drive and you're editing B-RAW footage that requires two or 300 megabytes a second, and this drive can only run at or, or read footage at 100 megabytes per second. Again, it doesn't matter what computer you're editing on, it won't be enough. And that is where these little pockets on the front of my computer come in that you might have been wondering about. These are from a company called Slip Drive. I found them on Amazon. I will include the links. I love going out and editing at cafes. All I would do was I would slip these drives, there's the pun right there, into here and plug them into the computer and just edit off these two alone. The project itself was over five terabytes of footage. In here, this is a four terabyte G Drive SanDisk SSD. And this is a one terabyte Samsung T7 Armor SSD. Both of them get around a thousand megabytes per second in terms of speed. And the rest of the footage, which was mostly a few hundred gigabytes of assets, I worked off this computer with. Because I wanted to future-proof myself and because I felt like I learned a hard lesson with my other Mac, I felt it was important to get 32 gigs of RAM, especially as cameras are becoming more advanced and people are gonna start shooting in eight and even 12K. I got one terabyte of the internal SSD. I felt like that was sufficient for me. I also opted for the 24 core GPU. That is the cheapest configuration you can get to obtain the M1 Max chip. So this is actually not the M1 Pro. This is the M1 Max here. So that's a little something to know. That is what is inside and outside of this computer. And this is all I would edit off of. So I love the portability of it. I love the low profile of it. But anyway, without further ado, let's dive into the project and see what we're working with. This here, this is all 6K raw footage. Look how smoothly this plays through. Not Now, there's, there's our hiccup there. Why do we have a hiccup there? I applied a lot of noise to this clip. So that's something to keep in mind. It's not buttery smooth when uh, you have noise reduction, but let's see if we apply half resolution. Yep, 
then it plays perfectly. It doesn't really take away from the edit at all. That's the important thing. Like I said with my previous computer, it didn't matter if you applied noise reduction, it would be super slow no matter what. By the way, we're screen recording right now. So this computer should be working overtime, but it's, you know, it's having no issues at all. The fans are, aren't running at all and it's extremely cool temperature wise. Now I wanna show you something because this, as messy as this looks, it gets even messier. The way I edited was, and many people edit this way, was I edited in nested sequences. Because it was such a big project, it was easier to edit a sequence within a sequence within a sequence. So let's say we have this sequence where the islanders meet. We jump in here and then we find this other scene where my character, I actually act in the film, I act as a server. We jump in there and then there's all this stuff in here. So we're in a dream within a dream. It's like Inception. We're in multiple layers already. But then within each of these clips is a multicam clip. You're seeing take two, angle one, take two, angle two. So you jump in there and there's stuff in there layered. So it's really amazing how much is going on here in this master timeline and the computer is handling it with no problem. Okay, so let's look here. And the reason I wanna look here is because if we jump into this sequence or that compound timeline, we'll see that we have one, two, three, four. Four B-Raw clips layered on top of each other with multiple frame rates and each of them is keyed out. So there's keying and coloring going on. Um, this character, Kevin's face is keyed out, Space Needle's keyed out, that moon is keyed out, and then over here, this mountain's keyed out. So let's see how that plays back. Plays back perfectly. That's crazy. That's amazing. I remember having some a little trouble at times with this one, but yeah, now I'm playing it it plays back perfectly. Look how many clips we have on top of each other. All B-Raw, all 6K B-Raw, multiple frame rates, keyed out, everything. So, so far, the biggest trouble we run into is NR, noise reduction. Now, there's one last editing scenario that I wanna show you, are these intros. If we look at the master timeline, each character in the film has their own little character intro. These intros were kind of our bread and butter of the effects work in the editing room, so to speak. But if you run through this, I'm speeding through it, there are no problems. It runs through perfectly smoothly. But then there will be random moments where we have, we're gonna have some media offline here, but we have stuck playback. And there's nothing especially complex in this part of the, the sequence differently from here. So again, I just wanna highlight that sometimes it's not clear if this is the computer's issue or if this is like a DaVinci Resolve bug or if it's corrupt media. But if we go to playback, we go on half resolution, gives us issues. We go to quarter, so we do lose some quality there. So that is something for you to consider. If you are doing a lot more intensive work than me, you might find out the answer to this, what, what is causing certain things to slow down. But overall, highly recommend the MacBook Pro. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope this could be helpful to you in making your decision, because like I said, I was very skeptical of buying this computer at first, but it genuinely does uh, work very well. It probably has some limitations that I have not run into yet, you know, do, uh, related to the demands of of the, the footage I'm working with and that sort of stuff. But overall, I don't think there's a better computer out there, especially considering how portable this is. Things will probably change as technology and camera technology advances and things like 8K and 12K become more normalized. But for now, yeah, I don't have too many complaints about this computer. So let me know if you have any questions and uh, happy, uh, happy holiday shopping. Spend wisely.